Welcome back to the next episode of Aditya Birla Health Insurance's Health from Home series. We've been doing these sessions for more than a year now, and I hope you are enjoying and benefiting from the conversations we are hosting with our expert doctors. In this episode, we are going to be talking about how mental stress during these times can be managed well. We all know the new wave of COVID-19 has brought about a bigger mental strain with it than last year. People have been complaining about fatigue. There is an increase in anger levels, frustration. People are feeling low, trying to find a meaning to life. Encouragement that keeps us going. In fact, those who had been doing great, coping well with stress, are also feeling pulled down today. So we have with us Dr. Vinod Kumar, a psychiatrist and head Empower the Center. Dr. Vinod has trained extensively in the UK and has qualifications and skills in various psychotherapeutic modalities. He has endeavored to develop a truly holistic approach to mental health issues where uh, the focus is on individual personality and the way that interacts with the illness. A very warm welcome to you, doctor. Hi, doctor. Hi. So let's get started. Doctor, like I mentioned, we've been hearing, experiencing mental stress. How do you think one can relieve stress in these trying times? Well, so, you know, the, the word, the term stress is touted about quite a lot, Javji. And it's really interesting that most of us don't really understand it. You know, if you ask a, a group of people, like, what do you uh, think it means by stress? You know, so it's a very kind of um, ethereal concept. I'll try and define it a little bit before we I answer your question. So uh, basically, when a human being or a person uh, feels overwhelmed, so uh, you know when when you when you uh, are put in a situation where your capacity exceeds. So if you are supposed to do uh, you know ten things and you're asked to do hundred things, you will be stressed. You know, and there are pressures of deadlines or you know situations which are out of your control. That is what will make you stressed because you know your perception is that this situation is beyond my abilities. And if that, that kind of a situation uh, is persistent and continuous, it's a problem. It's a big problem, you know. So we all will, will get stressed from time to time when we are alive and living in this world. Uh, and that's okay because, you know, there's a form of stress which is good stress. So we call it e EU stress or EU stress, right? So, uh, so it's not distress, it is EU stress. So okay. EU stress, right? So that is uh, is very good for our uh, optimal functioning. So Jesse, for instance, uh, you know, before starting this conversation, I, I am in a little bit of EU stress because you know then I'm a bit more alert and alive, and I'm thinking of my feet. Otherwise, at the end of the day, I would be a bit uh, in a bit like a bit of a slumber. So uh, not all stress is bad stress, you know. So appropriate optimal amount of stress is our friend. It makes us function better. Suppose you want to do a presentation or on a show or whatever. So when that state of uh, feeling a bit, you know, uh, alert and, and anxious, uh, if it exceeds a certain level of opt optimum, uh, you know, uh, level, then it, it sort of starts to hamper our uh, functioning. So when, the, and the, when you're in that mode more often than not, that's what I would actually classify as, you know, being stressed. I'm really stressed out, you know, and because that's happening every day, and, and then that has its own impact on everything: your mental well-being, of course, but your physical health and, and everything else, you know. So uh, your question was again that how does one deal with it? You know, the answer. How will, do we believe it in these yeah. times? Yeah, so no, very so, so, like you said. Uh, yeah. It is also good. It's, it's, so I, I I'm hearing that stress also yeah. is a good thing. It's a good sign. But but yeah, the distress, the kind of uh, bad stress, if you like, which is ongoing and persistent and continuous. Mm -hmm. So you know this this notion that you join a yoga class or do a bit of pranayama or or do some savasana and and that'll go away is is a bit uh, simplistic to to say the least because uh, one has to look at what is the source of the stress right mm. where is it coming from now if you don't stop that flow and if you just you're accumulating a lot of stress and then you're just discharging it a little bit uh, here and there that's not a very good strategy to have so one has to kind of pause and think that what is it that's making me uh, feel this way right 
and how can i modify the source of stress to begin with ideally speaking so if you got a very difficult boss for instance or you know a very hard job or or your financial circumstances are bad or you've lost a loved one or you know there's a series of disasters and so you you can't stop that stress so that's going to come right so then one has to find ways so it's it's a kind of multi pronged approach to looking at uh, if we can uh, uh, like modify the source of stress if possible and if it's not possible then how do we best deal with it and so on you know yeah and uh, the problem is when people don't pause and think they don't even know where it's coming from so it's like uh, you know they say you know ki kolo ke bel you keep going around and around in circles hitting your head repeatedly and wondering what's happening you know so that's that's not a good uh, smart strategy if you ask me so yeah. but what do you think are the simple practices that uh, one can follow to maintain mental well being to reduce like you said the distress that is there uh, which is the negative uh, sort of stress that we are dealing with and i think it's very genuine today because of the current times we're hearing lots around us how do you maintain what are the simple practices one could do uh, to maintain a mental well being so uh, i think i think one word answer is balance and and which is which is an impossible thing for a, for all of us to achieve these days you know so uh, what tends to happen is uh, we kind of you know don't have enough and then we get uh, when, when we get some sort of uh, accolades or, or financial reward then we can't stop ourselves so then we kind of go down on the seesaw if you like on productivity and and so on so you know if one has to maintain optimal mental health one has to have a, a, a brilliant work life balance which is different for different people and in different professions uh, there has to be a sense of you know you don't just work for uh, you know uh, you, you haven't taken birth to work you know uh, you 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 work to make a living and that's that's where it should stop and life has to always be there in a balance life has to be there uh, you need to have your your family time your your friends time your me time your uh, exercise your meditation your relaxation your entertainment now how do we juggle all these sort of needs and find that sort of balance which works for us individually so that we can have a a, a perception of a healthier and experience of a healthier existence you know mm. so the tendency uh, will always be to kind of veer on one side or the other but the important thing is to become aware of it and, and try and uh, find that balance again and it's a process and you know we, one has to keep uh, working on it and and the key point there is that one has to uh, uh, introspect and, and 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 be aware of what's going on because most of the time we are not we just go on a treadmill and we just keep going you see and that's that's where the biggest problem is if you ask i think the last one year has been like that and like you're saying there needs to be discipline it's not just about work it's so about so you know so my my answer uh, till now was about general kind of principles but if you think about what's happening now I and mean, you know since the beginning of the pandemic it's it's absolutely crazy i mean none of us expected this none of us are Uh, accepting this you know we are hoping for a mir- miraculous change and so on. but the kind of disruption it has brought is it's unbelievable so because i the kind of work i do uh, so people have you know like you were saying earlier that people have either lost their livelihood or they are overworked and and underpaid or uh, just change is stressful uh, jabji you know uh, like uh, if you think about stress as a general concept Yeah. any big change in life uh, is very stressful for instance you know when you when you when you are a little bit older and you start school it's a stressful time to adjust that when you leave school it's a problem when you enter college it's a problem when you finish education and go into work it's a problem when you get married it's a problem when you have a child it's a problem so you no know, change big changes in life so now what this pandemic has done is it has brought on this sort of Uh, tsunami of changes in people's lives what? so not only in their work life but what happens is say work from home for instance now it's a big change see uh, a husband and a wife who have this precarious balanced relationship ki the wife can tolerate this guy's uh, sort of issues and annoying habits for 
a certain amount of time in a day so this guy is sitting there all day you know what i mean and and that is stressful uh, you know children being at home is stressful you know mothers can cope with children going to school and then then it's her me time and her cooking time and so you know suddenly they're just there eating her head all day long you know so couples are fighting you know children are uh, depressed bored i'm bored ma i'm bored ma and it's not like a a short period of stress this is just this is just crazy uncertain ongoing it just goes on and on and on and on it'll break the best of us uh, spirits you know so that's what we are facing and so it's very understandable that a lot of people and and that i think you know i think nobody is spared to be honest you know uh, are going through a lot of tough times so some are very uh, resilient and philosophical in their outlook and, and and like like i am you know so i i would say this is the time to we were all on this stupid treadmill at least in the urban centers you know and this is the time to actually pause and reflect and wonder what is the point of life so you can take that angle a little bit but you know that only goes for that distance then again the uncertainty ki am i going to work or not am i you know what is happening what's the future can i travel what's you know what's happening to the school what's happening to the exam what's happening to everything i mean everything is up in the air and the greatest source of stress is uncertainty mm. you know Are so when is to pause like you said it is important to pause it is important to reflect because that can actually solve a lot of stress issues that you're facing are there ways some tricks to do it because we know we hear we think but how do you do it no so so it's not rocket science the answer to that one basically uh, if you think about normal times what what is a uh, a healthy life mm-hmm. say you maintain basic sleep hygiene okay uh, ki, you know you sleep at the right time you wake up at the right time you have a structure and a plan for the day you're going to do four to six hours of productive work whatever it is work mm-hmm. studies you know uh, you're going to spend an hour learning something new you're going to spend an hour exercising you you're going to spend a couple of hours chilling you know it could be talking to your friends or watching your your favorite serial or on a netflix series or whatever so if you maintain that balance even in this difficult times the chances are that you will cope better yeah. right so what people are doing is they have uh, said goodbye to sleep hygiene you know the laptops you know and and the mobile phones are there in the bedrooms you know people have no idea of what time they're going to sleep what time they're waking up there's no sort of purpose or structure or routine to their days i mean this is common sense and, and a lot of people are falling prey to not following it so my you know uh, i'm kind of now i feel like a parrot talking about this every day all day every, every client i'm saying you know get this right get your sleep hygiene right get your uh, routine and structure in place have some me time have some le- relaxation time have some you know entertainment time and so on uh, exercise very important you know it's just you have to experience it see on the days when you don't do anything anything physical mm. there is a sense of like numbness in the head a sense of boredom in the in the whole being you know but if you had a a good jog or or, or a session of yoga looking at somebody online or whatever that is possible uh, you and you take a shower and then you just sit there and you you can read a book and you feel awesome you know so i mean it's not rocket science but people don't do it that's the problem jabji you know uh, i understand doctor also it, it's about routine right so earlier there was the routine we would wake up do our morning exercise or rituals and then we had to work we come back there is a routine i think that's what happened to all of us in that last one year mm-hmm. uh, the routines and, and of course was a big change so uh, what i understand like you're saying there needs to be a routine we need to understand and find a pattern that fits well with our life so <laughs> because that will make the make the days and the weeks and the months flow by you know before you know uh, you know the difficult times of the past you know like uh, this two shell past kind of you know saying uh, that only happens if you are if you are kind of uh, functioning in a so you just take every day at a time you do what you're supposed to do you know and 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 then uh, you sleep and you wake up and you do what you're supposed to do you know and before you know the months gone and the, and the and the years gone you know so that's very important very important and also doctor like right now the situation is affecting young kids as well uh they can find to the home with minimal social interaction uh and also since there is stress at home uh, we hearing a lot of 
negative news around us, a lot of people getting affected. While children may not talk about it or express it, it definitely affects them. How in such circumstances can parents create a better atmosphere for them at home and focus on their mental and physical well-being? No, so first thing, you know, this is very interesting because, you know, uh, I had to write an article on this, you know, some uh, journalists asked me to kind of write about the impact of the pandemic on children and so on. So, you know, in my research, what I came across was uh, several papers which were written uh, during the World War and, and big sort of calamities, you know. And what was very heartening was that children are phenomenally resilient. They adapt a lot better than we can do, you know, uh, who are in our 40s and you know, 50s and so on. Because we, as we get older, we our psyche also gets a bit more rigid. Yeah. The children are phenomenally resilient. I, I mean, that, that's the starting uh, point I wanted to clarify. And uh, so, so what can parents do to make their, uh, you know, situation or ambience at home better is A, do not fall apart yourself, okay? B, you maintain a routine and sleep hygiene and a sense of purpose to your day within your constraints, within your situation, you know? Uh, and if you maintain that sort of uh, healthy attitude, outlook, a, a reasonably grounded, optimistic outlook. So the children just without thinking imbibe that. So if you've got a very neurotic father who's constantly looking at uh, the news app and, 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 you know, sort of panicking and sort of, yeah, this, you know, today there are 15,000 cases and, you know, 2,000 deaths and, oh my God, my friend's dead and he's uh, openly. So it, there's no need to expose every child and children of different ages are different, of course. So, you know, you, one has to know by intuition that where they are with their emotional maturity and what sort of information is appropriate for them and, and not. But, you know, it's about that. So that plus uh, children need structure. Children need activity. Okay. So, uh, you know, one has to do what one can within the restraint uh, that uh, gives them the opportunity to burn their excess energy, right? So, I mean, obviously, their classes are online, their, their social life is online. You know, are moving so, out. Yeah. So, you know, like, can find. I think in the very early on, early on in the kind of pandemic, I've got like six kid li li kids living in my house my brother, my uh, sister, and, and my kids, you know. So what I did was, I, I, when I got, got an opportunity, I went to one of the uh, sports superstores, and I got uh, a, a basketball hoop fixed outside, just outside in the, uh, you know, in the car parking area. I got a, a, a sort of set of table tennis net and table tennis thing, which you can fix on a dining table, got a, a carom board, you know. Uh, and uh, we can also play cricket within the, the terrace area. I mean, you know, you have to be very creative. So you create uh, opportunities for them to sort of burn energy. Secondly, you know, there's a plethora of uh, online uh, classes for, for fitness and exercise. So, you know, uh, in fact, my whole family, we've been doing martial arts training uh, four times a week two hours in the morning. So we had to wake up at six. So, you know, if my son or daughter have slept at three, I'm like, you know, up you go now, you know, our class starts and we're all training together. Then we kind of make, uh, have a leisurely breakfast and get on with our studies or work or whatever, you know, so you have to be creative and you have to create that normal ambience within this uh, sort of constrained situation, you know, and that goes a long way. I think. Like we need to be more creative. And, 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 you know, within whatever, people will say, uh, you know, there's pandemic, I can't, I can't go out. Like, you know, wherever you're living, you know, you, you will have some physical space to burn your energy. You don't have to do a lot, you know, even a half an hour of just doing, if nothing is possible, you're stuck in a room, like you're quarantining or something. Every day, do 30, 13 Surya Namaskaras. Look at a YouTube video on how to do it properly and do that. And that will just make you feel so much better, you know. But whatever is possible, one has to do. So the basic yeah. principles of, of living a healthy life shouldn't change. They should be adapted to the situation we are in. Mm -hmm. No, that's interesting. In fact, that takes me to one of my recent experiences also. And my question to you, like, how do you talk or explain to the children about COVID without making them anxious? So... Recently, I'll tell you one of my personal experiences here. I gave an idea to my niece recently to think of interesting ways using arts to communicate about the need for wearing masks. Why do we need social distancing? What are the other important things that uh, one must do to stay protected? Like you said, it's important to engage. So that was my idea to engage her. 
and then a series of questions followed my way i honestly did struggle to explain uh, and the biggest challenge that came my way was to explain the situation without making her feel anxious so she had too many questions of why covid why should i do this video uh, how is it affecting people and i did not want to scare her because today situation is scary so what do you think are the best ways to explain and make children aware of the situation no so i think there is no substitute for honesty jyoti so you know uh, kids today are not like how we were kids you know uh, they they very very i mean again it depends on on the age and the emotional maturity of the child of course you know but what is appropriate for that uh, that level i think honesty and explaining it uh, to them in a way which they understand without going into the technicalities of it you know but the truth that this is what is happening in the world and and hence we all need to take care and if we take care we'll all be okay you know so the level which they get you know so we, we can't uh, we can't not answer their questions you know so I, i'll tell you i was doing this sort of uh, talk to a group of kids from 10th grade okay so they must be around 14 okay and one and this was about sexual health awareness you know the school requests we do so so i went along and you know uh, the first session didn't go very well because they were all very shy and they didn't ask too many questions and so on next time when the next round came i asked the teacher to circulate uh, uh, a sheet and uh, ask each student to write two questions about sexual health and their awareness and if they have any questions about that right so where they are with it in, in their life and they they wrote they were like about 60 odd questions on the sheet which the teacher shared with me when i looked at that it just literally blew my mind away you know so we think they don't know <laughs> with with this sort of the way the world is now you know it's everywhere you know they know a lot of things so there's no point uh trying to mollycoddle them or hide things from them you know so you 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 say the truth but in a way which they can understand and you say it in a in a uh, realistically optimistic way that you know these are the problems and these are real problems but these are the solutions and hence we all need to do this as responsible people and responsible citizens you know so it's that kind of, it gives them a sense of agency they have a sense of understanding and then they have a sense of uh, accountability you know now this is my duty my mom's explained this to me and i i'm supposed to do this and i'm going to do this you know and they they will find a sense of purpose in that so there's no point saying ki kuch nahi beta you know there is no problem there is a problem you know and and that's the reality right i think so so yeah so that's important i think and i i did struggle to really explain that it is she kept asking me why do we need this why do we need to say why do we need to just do a video because uh, kids kids do want to understand what's happening and why are we conversing and talking about an important topic and uh, so what do you think are the tips and tricks uh, uh, that can help us manage what's that we ourselves go through yeah no so uh, so obviously this question is in the context of worries about covid and and, and the consequences correct yeah yeah so you know if you think about it uh, almost all our problems are are because of our thinking you know <laughs> so all the so like uh, uh, all the misery the root cause is our thinking you know and there's a lot of kind of philosophy around it and so on so uh, you know uh, thinking is a very useful tool obviously you know that's what has led to all sorts of innovations and creativity and so on you know and learning but uh, it's like a carpenter who's attempting to make uh, uh, a table or a chair Mm-hmm. and he's got a hammer and a chisel and a, and a saw and and all the rest of it but who he is only using the hammer on a piece of wood and just continuously hitting it you know what i mean he's never going to end up making a chair out of that you know so he has to use the hammer which is the thought appropriately and and judiciously and you have to so we have different tools in our mind so one of the important ones is thinking right there's feelings there's perceptions there's uh, uh, all sorts of functions that the mind has to perform right so you think when it's appropriate and useful to do so what is what is wrong or a disease state is when you get obsessionally fearful worrying thoughts which escalate into a frenzy and people have panic attacks and people can't sleep because of that and you know uh, everything goes wrong so there are 
uh, so many ways of managing that. The simplest one is that, you know, the, the basic fallacy, which all of us are kind of guilty of, is that there is a sense that um, me, Vinod, I am my mind and my thoughts. So when I have negative thoughts, I kind of sit in the bandwagon and go with it, you know. So now the first thing that needs to change is that we are not our thoughts. It's like saying, uh, I am my sweat, okay. So skin is part of me and sweat is coming from my skin. So the brain is part of me and the thoughts are coming from the brain. So I can't say I'm just my sweat. You know what I mean? So my sense of self has to be uh, not be identified with my thoughts and brain alone. Okay. So who am I then? I am this awareness. So uh, there is a when, when we are alive and when we are awake, there is an awareness which is constantly aware that I'm thinking this, I'm feeling this, I'm experiencing this, right? Now, that awareness uh, uh, has an option of giving attention to which aspect of the brain's functioning or the whole experience of life. So, uh, just imagine, uh, say you and me are walking down the street, okay? And there's like five vicious dogs just barking at us. And I'm not bothered, okay? I'm just whistling away and just walking casually. And you get really perturbed by these dogs and you look at them and you say, you know, bad doggy, stop, stop. And now this doggy has got so much importance that you look at your eyes, you look at looking at, at the doggy's eyes and there is no stopping the barking. Okay. So the dogs are like your thoughts. I'm just using an analogy of that. So if you, it's not the thought, the thoughts are never the problem. It's how you have, uh, how you relate to your thoughts is the problem. And that is modifiable. How? It's very simply uh, demonstrated in so many ways now. All you have to do is, is shift your attention to your breathing, wherever you are. If you find yourself overindulging in sort of negative, uh, catastrophic thoughts, you, you know, I, I, we'll all die or, you know, this will die and I'll die and lose my job. You know, so you, you have the option of switching that off by just focusing on your breath, okay? It's like uh, switching the AC off by pressing a button and the thoughts will just wither away, okay? The problem is we just engage with them <coughs> and then dance with them and fight with them and try to stop them, you know? And that <laughs> leads to all sorts of issues. So it's, it's quite a deep thing what I've just said, but uh, you know, this is the answer to your question in, in a simple way, if you like. I hope you understood. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think, yeah, we keep hearing, we keep hearing yoga, breathing, etc. But I think, yes, it's really important. So, so what, what this is, it's a very good point you make. So what happens is, just imagine if you, Jabji, you don't know English, okay? Mm -hmm. And I immediately start teaching you uh, Shakespearean sonnets or, or something like that, okay? Some yeah. hi-fi English literature. You don't know ABCD. And then you're grappling with Shakespeare. You know what I mean? It's that's yeah. what's happening in our country. So the, the basics of, of meditation and mind management, mind uh, thought management is is just breath awareness. You know that's what uh, the Buddha taught. That's what all the good teachers will teach you. First, get a mastery over that. Then you go into the deeper stances of meditation and the, the different techniques and so on. You know, nobody knows the basics and you'll find everybody across the country sitting in every park going, thaw, thaw. they're doing Anulom Vilam and, you know, uh, uh, Kapal Vatis and so on. So it's like, you know, somebody who doesn't know ABCD is he's, uh, trying to read Shakespeare. That's what the problem is. So go down to the basics of, of, of uh, mind management. And there's so many resources now on the net. It's unbelievable. If you look for them and there are so many, I can sort of tell you later as well. But... Uh, is starting there and, and don't people try to find quick fixes there are no quick fixes you know you can't learn a language overnight can you uh, so you know the, the the reason i can talk to you so fluently in english today is because i've been uh, grappling with this language since i i found my sense of self you know from the first grade onwards and more right so it's taken 40 years me to kind of come to this level of mastery of the language so how can you master the management of your mind in a, in a night uh, or a week or, or you know it's the process and one has to uh, follow it diligently and and uh, under the ages of the right teacher if you like you know uh, and yeah. then you will you will find that I think. so so breathing is the key and is important breath, breath awareness yeah. Bre breathing is see the moment you came out of your mom's womb you started breathing right the first cry Till you take your last HP, you will be breathing, okay? Whether you're sleeping or sitting or you're walking or you're running. So the problem is we are not aware of it. So I'm just saying it's a very simple 
a constantly present tool for us to anchor our attention see otherwise our attention is like you know a, a man drowning in a rough sea he has no kind of yeah you have this thought you go there you have this feeling you go there right now suddenly if you if you find uh, like a floating ball anchor mm. you like ha huh, you know so uh, putting your attention on your breath is like finding that anchor you know uh, and that sense of being in the here and now and let the thoughts like the dogs they just boom, they go away right uh, so that's that's how simple it is in in theory but uh, you have to practice and experience it and, and harness it and develop it and fine tune it as you go along you know uh, yeah important and uh, to, it reminds me to all our viewers here who are watching us you can drop your questions in the comment section and we will be addressing them after the session uh, so doctor uh, like talking about mental health issues we all know is still a stigma today when we have a knee pain or a headache we are ready to see a doctor but when there is need for intervention to support mental well being there is reluctance this is because we often deny our feelings and push them under the carpet how do you think we could break this habit no so th that's the million dollar question see so the stigma against mental health or mental uh, illness is is a universal phenomenon in all cultures i mean to the point where in japan there are instances where when somebody says that a doctor says that you have schizophrenia it's a kind of form of you know illness where your mind is uh, having errors of of hearing things and seeing things the next thing most <coughs> there was a time when people would just go and jump off the next high rise so so there there's a lot of ingrained cultural Uh, biases, if you like, against the whole. So the, it, I think it stems from the sense of me being. I'm a mind. Okay. So if my stomach is uh, hurting, I will go see a doctor, take a pill, get all right, no problem. My heart is uh, beating faster, or if there's a problem here, I will go get an angiography done and sort it out, no problem. But if there's a problem here. That means I'm admitting that something wrong with me. Yeah. so then the sense of ident identification of yourself with the brain is the fundamental problem if you like you know uh, that's a deeper thought but uh, you know i think uh, attempts have been made across the world and in our country as well in particularly our organization so under the aegis of mrs birla we have done a lot of work to to improve awareness what we're doing today is also part of that we, although we didn't go too much into the the kind of illness side of things uh, but it's about understanding that you know when god makes us you know it's, it's a complex structure our physical self right so things go wrong things go wrong in the heart in the kidney in the brain even you know and the the amazing thing is they're fixable uh, it's fixable with simple solutions you know uh, so i'll just give you one simple stat which will which is mind boggling okay so we we don't know our data in our country is not that great but we estimate that close to 3 lakh people kill themselves in our country every year Okay, that's uh, and and according to WHO website, eight point eight lakh killed uh, themselves across the world. So India is by far the most uh, you know suicide suicide prone country, if you like. You know, now the fact is this uh, stress we were talking about initially, which is which is relentless, ongoing because of life and circumstances and so on, that can precipitate a depressive illness. So what that means is that the brain. and its hormones they kind of go into a shutdown mode so you don't have the same joy uh, spirit happiness a kind of being a sense of being alive you know your sleep gets disturbed your concentration goes your appetite goes your your libido goes you know so you you kind of dead to life okay now when all of us experience that sometimes when we are under too much stress but we all have an inherent ability to sort of get out of that in a couple of days or so but if you go down like that okay and you stay there for weeks or months that's clinical depression and and the treatment is counseling and and support and guidance but just one pill safe effective non addictive non sedative no side effects of modern pills 5 rupees 10 rupees a day pill and within 3 to 5 days the brain comes alive again like you were before you became depressed and uh, the person doesn't have to kill him, himself but nobody comes okay nobody comes and seeks appropriate help 
uh, see the doctors themselves are not that aware of of mental health issues so see if you are depressed you know it will manifest in the form of doctor i can't sleep at night or you know i have problems in my stomach my digestion is wrong and they will do endoscopy and blood test like everything's fine go away you know so then you go okay i have sought medical help there's no answer there for me okay and i'm suffering okay uh, so what do i do and you just live with that for weeks on end months on end then finally you just say it's too dark too deep i don't want an existence like this and then you you end up killing yourself so uh, i would say all those three lakh uh, deaths are preventable if we have the right awareness and the right access to quality ethical uh, you know uh, mental health services which which is uh, you know essentially a, a kind of uh, government function but you know in our country a lot of it is just public private partnership isn't it so i mean you know organizations like ours are are, are spearheading but there's so many people in our country who are doing such great work in this field and the the point is if somebody dies of a heart attack because they couldn't afford a bypass surgery that's understandable okay because we don't have that kind of endless resources ki you know everybody gets a 5 lakh rupee bypass surgery but if just a 5 rupee pill can save lives and we are still not doing that because the barrier is the stigma which you which you mentioned and you know lack of awareness lack of uh, access you know we have to change that i think and 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 now not not wait for years you know for that to happen also like uh, like like you mentioned when we have a stomach ache or a, say a headache we know there is a consultation required right uh, but there are times when uh, when it comes to uh, mental uh, well being what are the signs to watch for to know that we require intervention see the the key is uh, persistence of dysfunction or, or persistence of of lack of functioning so suppose you have a bit of indigestion okay and you mm-hmm. take a uh, uh, you know soda or or some sort of gharelu uh, you know nuska for that and your digestion gets okay then you're okay you're not going to go see a doctor for that no but if that diarrhea or that uh, indigestion goes on for weeks on end you will go seek help right so same thing with the mental health so if you if you are having sleepless nights for a day or two if you are not that happy for a day or two or, or you know or so it's okay and you do your usual things you rest you meet your friends you relax or whatever and you you wake up feeling better then there's no need for consultation but if if you are not functioning so the symptoms are it will affect your your mood okay your sleep your appetite your concentration your ability to enjoy life small things in life ki i love this cup of tea you know with the other can it and and oh that's nice but you can't you can't you can't enjoy the smile of a little child who is being naughty at home you know you're like whatever you know so now when these symptoms are persistent and and i wouldn't put a number on it ki you know this many weeks but if it is if, if it is going into weeks rather than days okay it's time to seek help and 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 what does it mean uh, with in today's time uh, online consultations are a norm you know like you and me we could have been in the same room i mean it's that that good now isn't it so all you need to do is just book an appointment talk to a mental health professional who will kind of you know assess you know you can go see a gastroenterologist who will check you out hear your history and say don't worry about it take this pill for a week and you'll be fine okay if it doesn't get better come back and we'll do an endoscopy you know what i mean so it's that kind of an approach so when there's a problem which is not going away uh, and it's hampering your everyday living then you need to seek professional help and it's as simple as that i think that's what we need to get out of like we seek professional help for anything like this we don't need to deal with it ourselves we can seek help yeah and like there's so many tools out there right to monitor oxygen blood pressure diabetes etc <laughs> any tools to monitor mental health that tells you now is the time to go so common sense is the first one <laughs> i would say you know but i think the most important thing is uh, just being human so one one thing that has happened is uh, uh, doctors have stopped being humans so as you walk into a specialist room they will just look at you as if you're a number and these are the symptoms these are the tests you go get this test done this is the protocol no nobody and that's why we, there was a big study done so you know uh, more than 95% of clinical depression is missed by physicians of any sort of description whether they are general practitioners or hospital specialists they don't pick it up 
because nobody sits down uh, sits down and talks about ki jabli how are you you know just two questions how are you how has your mood been in the last few weeks okay and uh, uh, you know if if you have the time you ask about sleep appetite and so on the basics of of being alive right and if the answer is clearly that no i i am normally not like this but since this happened since my divorce happened i'm just feeling this down i can't sleep at night i can't eat well i'm not doing well at work and so on so that's all it takes and you know these are like red herrings if you like and anybody and we are we are running various courses now uh, so you know we are training parents and teachers and you know it's called as the youth mental health first aid uh, uh, training so two day training to make uh, general people aware of uh, how mental illness presents in people so they, you know, they because the first aid is are the family members and the teachers and the parents isn't it now uh, if they pick up these early signs and then they they seek appropriate professional help we can save so many lives you know and improve the quality of life for a lot of people isn't it so the numbers are uh, are mind boggling so uh, one in three uh, indian will develop clinical depression in their lifetime okay so that means it's either you or your your loved one you know so it's not like this doesn't happen to us you know it, it is this those people it, that sort of thinking in the language itself is flawed because unless it hits your home you will really not know how painful i think it's more painful than any other physical illness you know just imagine your your kind of brain is is shutting down it's not functioning you know uh, and it's it, the the experience of it is so painful and so miserable that it can only be described appropriately by experiencing it i cannot put words and you know kind of say what it feels like to be depressed and i'm just talking about depression uh, now you know if you think about the whole range of mental health issues that uh, can happen to humans it's almost i don't think anybody is spared uh, you know so I, you know i've been in this field now for almost 25 years and and i've yet to meet a normal person you know honestly speaking so you know it's 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 like that. so you can go from this sort of clinical depression to psychotic illnesses where your brain malfunctions and you have very wrong beliefs ki somebody is trying to kill you somebody is monitoring you uh, to hearing voices to seeing things to to feeling anxious panicky being super obsessional about things cleanliness freaks you know uh, uh, perfectionistic uh, sort of tendencies to addictions uh, to alcohol to smoking to to drugs to relationship issues to uh, people becoming uh, people having what we call as personality disorders so whether virtue of their nature they are a problem to themselves and to everybody around them you know so there are there are counseling and therapy and 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 uh, treatments for all these things but people just don't know and they don't see it you know so that's that's the problem that's true actually are there any gharelu nuskas like we have for building immunity any nuskas for building strong minds yeah so uh, okay if you think about uh, i i always used to wonder so you know one of the sort of symbols of a strong minded person is is mahendra singh dhoni right so when he when he came on the scene i used to wonder ki in a country of fickle minded people where did this guy come from you know that belief that sort of absolute confidence ki i'm going to hit a six and i'm going to win every game that comes my way now the calmness that he does it with right where did he imbibe that from now it's a, a very big question right when i became a parent i started researching how do you build resilient minds you know and and it's a very uh, very deep question actually but the short answer is you know uh, i tell parents all the time that you know uh, nobody is, is is like i'm resilient i'm not so we are all uh, kind of on a spectrum of resilience if you like right so uh, our the purpose of life is to continuously uh, uh, aim for more and more resilience and strength of mind so say a father who's very very sorted uh, you know like dhoni now his son will automatically imbibe those values and those qualities you know uh, or whoever i'm just saying uh, the child is like a sponge okay so uh, my advice to parents all the time is don't worry about the children worry about yourself so just be on the quest for becoming more and more sorted and uh, resilient humans 
okay and and it's a process it's a lifelong process you know so the more you are further ahead in the game the better off your children are going to be that's yeah. that's clearly one of the biggest things but also just simple things like i said you know having a, a routine a purpose a sense of uh, direction to your days and weeks and months uh, sleep hygiene you know having some degree of uh, kind of control over things so it's like you know uh, just because we have the money now the children can just gorge on chocolates and ice cream every day and pizzas uh, and they all have ipads and, and they're just lying around like you know lazy bobs and and doing nothing obviously they they're going to grow up to be very dysfunctional humans you know so so it's it's not rocket science it's common sense but you know it's lacking you know <laughs> most of the yeah. time that's a problem so yeah. thank you doctor this is a really good conversation i'm sure all our viewers would appreciate the support extended by you in giving us tips and tricks to manage our stress levels and maintain a good mental well being thank you so much for um, being here no you're welcome jab you i think you've been a, a wonderful host so Thanks. you can you can invite me any time okay uh, uh, for any anything to do with mental health i'll be very happy to talk sure thank so. you okay bye take care take care